Hey, I'm Laura McCabe, and I'm here to talk to you about bezeling glass eyes. They may just be my claim to fame, and we'll start out with the disclaimer that they're not for everybody. But these beautiful little objects make a wonderful element in beadwork. They're all antique. Uh, they date from about 1890 to about 1940. And I've used them in all sorts of stuff. I've used them in bracelets, I've used them in necklaces, um, and they present some unique uh, issues when it comes to bezeling. So I thought I'd do a little video for you about how I bezel these antique glass eyes. Okay, before we get into the beading part of this, let's take a moment just to talk about the tools and the materials that you're gonna need for this project. So first you're gonna need your needles. You'll need a size 13 beading needle, and the 13 is quite small. You're gonna need that because we're working with Czech Charlottes for this particular technique. You will also want, if you're working with leather, which is what I'm doing for this demo, you'll want a size 12 glover's needle. These are specific to stitching leather. They come in a bunch of different sizes. The size 12 is the smallest, and that's what you'll need to get through the 15 round seed beads. So these guys are very uh, sharp. They're a short needle and a sharp needle. So you'll have to be careful when you work with them because um, they, do, they do poke. So those are what you'll need for needles. You will also need your thread. I use Fireline, but you can use what you like. I use a six pound Fireline, but you certainly can use a nylon thread or whatever your preference is for thread. You'll need a pair of scissors to cut them. Um, I like these titanium ones when I'm working with my Fireline because they really, they hold up quite well. Fireline does a number on scissors. You'll, um, you'll know if you work with it or you'll discover if you start to work with it. So don't use a great pair of scissors, but these are, these are good. They're relatively inexpensive and they do seem to last for a while. So. Um, you will also need, if you like to work with wax, you'll need your wax. I work with microcrystalline wax, which is a synthetic, uh, be it's a, they call it synthetic beeswax. It's a man-made wax. It helps, for me, I find, keep a consistent tension, and it also helps reduce the number of knots in my thread. So that's why I like working with my wax. You will also need, for this project, some glue to glue the eye down to the leather or whatever you're stitching it onto. So I like E6000, that's my preference, but not um, everybody likes that. It does. It is a little bit fumey. So if you don't like the E6000, any kind of craft adhesive will work for this because really the glue is just to kind of uh, temporarily hold the eye in place. The bezel itself is what's gonna ultimately hold it down. So it's just to hold it in place. And to apply your glue, you'll need a coffee stirrer or a, a popsicle stick or toothpick, something like that. So those are the basic tools you'll need. As far as the materials you're gonna need, you'll need the size 11 Japanese cylinder beads, and they do need to be a size 11. These guys come in different sizes, so size 11. You will need 15 round Japanese seed beads. And what I do when I do this, I pick one color that's either an exact match or a close match to my cylinder beads. So you can see here, this is actually an exact color match in the cylinder beads and the 15 rounds. And then I'll pick a couple other colors, which sort of uh, work nicely with the iris of the eye. So I'll kind of tie them into that. And then you want check Charlottes as well, because we'll be using this on the bezel as well and you're gonna need your leather or whatever you're gonna be stitching onto. You can use the same technique to stitch onto fabric or to stiff stuff, whatever it is that you like working on, but I tend to prefer the leather. And then the best part of all, you're gonna need your eye. So this is an antique prosthetic, um, dates to the early 1900s, this one. Um, they are a little bit tricky to find, but um, you can find them online and with antique dealers. So. Let's, uh, let's get on with the beading. Okay, let's just take a minute to talk about the eye here because they're so interesting. Um, these are antique glass eyes. They date from about 1890 up into the sort of mid 1900s. Um, they are not made this way anymore. So these are antique glass ones that were blown glass. The newer ones are a different technology entirely. But these are fantastic little pieces of art. Uh, I love working with them. They are all different, obviously, because they were made for the wear. And you'll find some of them, I wanted to show you this one in particular, because it's very interesting. Some of them have 
maker's marks in them. And this one, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this because it's very small, but there's a teeny tiny silver star in here on the back side. And that's an example of a maker's mark. They don't all have them, but you will find them um, from time to time in them. So I just wanted to take a minute to show you that on, on this one. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk to you about how we're gonna stick this down because we are gonna attach it to the leather. And here's my leather, bring that in. But you'll notice if you if you look at them or if you look at this one, they're not there's areas that are not gonna touch down flat onto the leather. There's only a couple of parts of this that are actually gonna touch down flat. So it's you know different than, than a cabochon because it is hollowed out on the back side. Um, but what we wanna do is we wanna we wanna glue this down in a way that's gonna just hold it in place temporarily. It's gonna be the bezel itself that actually holds the eye in. So this is just to kind of keep it from slip sliding when you're working with it. So let's go ahead, get our post-it note in here for our glue. I'm gonna use a little bit of E6000 here. Just put a little bit on my post-it note. And we're gonna take our coffee stirrer. And what we wanna do is just apply, so you wanna see which parts are gonna to touch down. For here, for me, it's like here and here are gonna to touch down to the leather. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue doesn't have to be much. A little bit of glue here and to here. And then we're gonna stick that down carefully, just like that. And I'm gonna let that dry. I would give it at least a half an hour. Um, you wanna make sure that that glue is good and dry before you start working with it, otherwise it will kinda slip around on you. But again, you just wanna have a little bit of glue on the parts that are gonna actually touch down on the leather. Don't worry about these areas, like here, where it's not touching down, just enough to hold it in place. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll let this dry and I will come back to it once it has. Okay, now that the glue has had a chance to dry, and I've let this dry actually overnight, so for quite some time, um, I'm ready to start my bezeling. First thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to thread up your needle. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're working with leather, which is what I'm working with, you probably will want a Glover's needle. These are, um, they're sort of triangular at the tip, super sharp, they do stitch fingers as well as they stitch leather, so do be careful if you're using them. But they come in different sizes. Um, size 12 is what you want for this because the size 12, it's uh, a smaller, size, smaller diameter needle, and those will get through size 15 round seed beads. So when you need to do, there's gonna be a part of this where we're gonna to need to be stitching 15 rounds and they will get through that. So they are short needles, and I'm gonna bring in here my fire line. And they do have very small eyes. That's the only downside to Glover's needles. So they're a little bit harder to thread. And we want to wax this thread. Well, I want to wax this thread. I'll leave that up to you if you like to wax or not. But if you are going to wax, what you want to do is you want to pass through the wax. I always say to do this gently at first because that the eye of the needles are, are delicate, more so on the beading needles than on the glover's needles, but you don't want to break the eye. And then you can pull it through. I actually cut pretty far into the wax there if you look. Um, but I like a lot of wax when I work. I find it really helps with my tension and it helps keep the knots away. So, And then the only thing with the wax is it does kind of gunk up on there, so you will want to scrape off the excess with your fingers. So we'll get that off there. And now, when it comes to doing the stitching with the leather, a uh, little tip I can, I can give you. So if you tie just a regular knot, like a regular overhand knot, it's a pretty small knot, and sometimes it will come up through the leather. So what I recommend doing is actually tying basically like, like a slip knot. So I'm gonna make a circle with my thread, and then I'm gonna start to pull this through, but only enough to make a loop. I'm not gonna pull that thread all the way through. So I've made my loop there, and now I'm gonna feed the tail through that loop and pull that down, and it gives you a slightly bigger knot. It's not a huge knot, but it is bigger than just an overhand knot. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut, take my scissors here, and I cut it and leave. You don't need much of a tail, quarter of an inch or even less is fine, not too much. And what we're gonna do is we are going to, let me bring my eye over here, we are gonna pass 
up through the leather. So you wanna come up through the leather right next to the eye. This is something that comes with practice um, because you're coming from the backside, you can't always see where you're coming out, but you will get a feel for that. So don't get frustrated if it's giving you trouble at first, just stick with it. And I'm gonna pull my thread all the way through. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually lay a base row of embroidery and then we're gonna peyote stitch off that base row. And I'm gonna do that base row with Japanese cylinder beads, the size 11, so these guys over here. And I'm gonna pick them up, I pick up, I do six at a time when I do my embroidery. I find it goes relatively quickly and it, um, it works. So we're gonna string up the six and I'm gonna lay them down right up against the eye. So can you see that? I'm, the cylinder beads blend quite well into that background leather, but I'm gonna string up my six, and then I'm gonna go back down through the leather right after that sixth bead. So I'm gonna pull this down into place, just like that, right? And now I'm gonna come up again. I wanna come up, it's sort of a back stitch between the third and the fourth. So I'm coming up between the third and the fourth. And I'm gonna then pass through numbers four, five, and six again. So string up your six, go down, and then come back up between the third and fourth and go through the fourth, fifth, and sixth again. So that gives you that little stretch there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way around, doing six at a time all the way around. Um, when we get to the end, I'll talk to you about that last little section, but six at a time. And what you wanna do, because if you remember, parts of this don't come right down to the leather. So just imagine if you were to extend the eye down here, right down to the edge, that's the line you wanna follow. You don't wanna stitch underneath the eye because it's gonna make bezeling more difficult. So just envision it coming down to the bottom here and that's the line you're gonna stitch along. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the six beads at a time and then I'll be back when I get to that last little section so I can, I can show you about that. Okay, so I've completed the embroidery here most of the way around. There's just one little bit here that I need to fill in this last section. And now because we're gonna be doing tubular even count for our bezel, we want this last little section to be an even number. So we've been doing sets of six all the way around. As long as that last section in there is an even number, it'll end up even all the way around. So it could be two, it could be four, it could be six. Um, in my particular case here, it looks like four is gonna be about right. So let me string up the four and see how that looks. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, four is just about right there. So I'm gonna add those four in. Now, sometimes, seems more often than not that you know four will be too many two will be too few three would have been perfect um, so what I recommend in those cases I think you're better to go down a little bit so um, for example if three was the right number then I would drop down to two because what I find is when you try to shove too many in there it buckles later on so if, if you find that to be the case um, go ahead and drop down. I think you're better to drop down than to go up, really. Um, so here we go. We have finished our round. I put four on, so when I backstitch, I'm just gonna go go up between numbers two and three, so, and then go through two more beads. There we go, and that's done. Now, what I like to do is I just like to pass through all these beads one more time um, in the embroidery, because that, uh, just kind of straightens them up a little bit, makes them look tidier. So I'll just pass through them. I'm not going down into the leather at all. I'm just going through the beads all the way around just to straighten them out a bit. And you will notice a difference when you do this. You'll notice that it is considerably improved. There's a lot of dog huffing and puffing in the background. Not quite sure why, so if you hear that, that is what that is. When you're passing all the way around through these beads, and if you're not sure where you started, you can have a look at the back and you can see where that knot is. And once you've passed that knot, it means you've gone all the way around through them you know, one more time. 
You only need to go through once. You don't need to make multiple passes, but that'll straighten that up. Um, next step, I'm gonna have you switch out your needle because you don't need the Glover's needle anymore. You're gonna switch to a size 13 beading needle. Um, those That will be a little bit better when you're working the bezel because you are gonna be using Czech Charlottes for that part. So we're gonna thread up our size 13 needle and here it is. Um, we are gonna start peyote stitching off of this row of embroidery. So I have this row of embroidery here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with cylinder beads. So I'm gonna do around here with cylinder beads. And then this is gonna, this whole part, the row count and everything really depends on the shape and the curvature of the eye because they're all so different. So there's sort of not a set um, way to do it. It's just gonna depend on your eye. So it's gonna be a bit of a, a judgment call. But um, I usually end up doing at least one round that's all cylinder beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one round. As you put each of these cylinders in, you also want to make sure that you are kind of pulling up as you do it because you want these not to lay out, but actually stand up against the eye there because we're creating a bezel here. So with each one, you're gonna pick up the bead and then you're gonna go skip a bead, go through a bead. But after you've kind of put it in there, it may wanna lie flat on the leather. What you wanna do is just kind of push it up with your finger because you want them to start building this bezel here that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the row and I'll be back once this row is done. Okay, so here I am at the end of the round and I have one more bead to put in. So I'm gonna pick up my cylinder bead and I'm gonna stitch it in and then here's the step up, just like you always have with tubular uh, even count. There's gonna be the step up through two beads. So you wanna make sure you have that step up in there. And now we're ready to start another round. Now, this is where I'm gonna show you a little trick that really helps to get a really nice, uh, tidy look to your bezel. So with the eyes, you're gonna find that because the curvature is different all over and there's still some areas actually like this little region here where you can still actually see a bit of the hole because if you remember, it doesn't sit flat on the leather. So you're gonna find there's certain places now that you wanna continue building with cylinder beads, but there's other points in the eye where it's ready to come in and over the eye, you're ready to create a tighter bezel. And so the trick with that, and this is where I mentioned previously, having the cylinder beads in one of the 15 rounds in the same color, you can do this in a way that totally disguises that you're using two different sizes of beads. So what I'm gonna do is in a few places here, I'm gonna start off, and in these first few spots, cylinder's gonna gonna be the ideal thing for here. And now this is a judgment call. So it's gonna depend on you know your eye and if you, um, if you put in, say you put in a cylinder bead and it seems to be buckling, that would mean that you wanna take that out and you wanna put in the 15. If you put in a 15 and you see a little bit of thread, that means you're not really ready for 15s in that spot. So, um, you know, so play it by ear as you go. And uh, you will find that you get a nice look to your bezel by doing this. It just sort of, it uh, evens things out. And like I said, you know, some, a calibrated stone, the, the point at which things sort of start to curve in is consistent, but on something like this eye, that's not the case. So what I'm gonna do here, I think I'm gonna do one more cylinder in this one spot here, and then what you're gonna see is here, in this area, I'm already ready for it to start pulling in a little bit more. So at that point, I'm gonna switch to my 15s, and I'm gonna be adding 15s just for the next few spots and that really will pull it over a little bit better You get a nice bezel that way. So you're gonna have these, you know, potentially um, You know probably one possibly more than one of these rows where you have some cylinders and some 15s in the same row depending on the curve of the eye so um, and like I said, this is totally sort of dependent on your own particular um, eye that you're bezeling. They, they vary so much in their shape and their curvature. So I'm gonna continue this round, um, adding the 15s where that's appropriate and the cylinders where I need to do that. And then I will be back to talk about the next step.
Okay, so I have finished this row of sort of cylinders and 15s. Um, it's hard to see because, you know, they are the same color, which is sort of the point. Um, but this end here, you can see are the 15s. And then here and here, I ended up using cylinders and then I used 15s over here. But again, that's totally going to depend on your eye. And at this point, you have to assess the situation and say, am I going to do another row of mixed or am I ready to go just into the 15 rounds? Is it curved enough that I'm ready to do that? And in my particular case, I'm going to go straight into the 15 rounds now because I, I am pulled it in enough and I think we're good to go on that. But you can sort of determine that yourself and if necessary, do another row, you know, mix like we've done. So I've stepped up. And I'm going to start peyote stitching now just with these 15 rounds. And what I've done is I've kind of chosen colors of beads that, that work nicely with the iris of the eye. Um, you can do, you know, whatever you like. If you want a solid bezel, you could do it all the same color. But I kind of like to bring out the colors in, in the iris because they're all different and they're all really stunning. So I'm going to go ahead and do this round. And when I'm done with this round, I will be back to talk about some more. Okay, I finished this first round of the 15 round seed beads here. It's sort of like a bluey color. Um, and I've stepped up, and now I have, uh, I have space here to do another round of the Japanese uh, round seed beads as well. So I'm going to switch my color here. I like um, switching around and like I said I kind of pick my colors based on the colors of the iris. Um, another thing I can tell you about uh, bead colors or, or finishes really is that I like to use different finishes because I think if you use them in combination they sort of bring the best out of each other. So if you look here for the cylinder beads I did a, a metallic bead and then I switched over this is actually like a, a silver lined rainbow that I have with the blue color and then these guys are a matted bead so it sort of mixes it up and it does really it looks nice to do the combination of different finishes rather than just sticking with the same one all the way along. So I am going to do another round, yet another round, of these 15 round Japanese seed beads. And again, you know, as you do each one, you want to pull it in so that it's coming in and up and over the eye because we want this bezel to hold everything nicely in place. And I'm going to continue until I have completed this round and I'm going to come back to tell you about what is in my case going to be the final round. Okay, I finished this round here of that sort of matte color uh, 15 round seed beads. And for me at this point, I think I'm ready to move on to my final row because I don't want to cover up my iris there. It's kind of the, the best part. So I'm going to switch over to an even smaller bead, which are the 15 Czech Charlottes. And I'm going to add one of these between each of the 15 rounds in the previous round. So I'm going to peyote stitch one round with the Czech Charlottes. Now these guys are quite small and you're going to find depending on the finish, some are actually smaller than others. I find when they have sort of the metal finish, they're maybe a little bit bulkier, but um, when they don't have that, they're even thinner. So what you need to do is with this round, you're going to find sometimes when you go to put in your Charlotte, it's just not it's not big enough, you're gonna see some thread. So what I recommend is if that's the case, you can put two in the space because you really don't wanna see the thread showing there. So in this space, it's a little bit bigger than what one Charlotte would cover. So I'm gonna add two in and I'm gonna do that anywhere that I see that you know one is just not quite enough. But then there's gonna be places like along this part of the eye here where I really want it to pull in a little bit more and there's there's really only room for one Charlotte. So you kind of, again, this is a judgment call as you go around, but you're gonna finish this final round with those Czech Charlottes and I'll be back as soon as that's done. Okay, if you take a good look here, I've zoomed in a bit so you can see it even better, but I finished this round of Czech Charlottes, and you can see in places, you know, where I needed it, I put the two in. Uh, where I didn't need that, I put the one in, and that works fine. And just, the thing is, you just want it to come nice and tight over the eye and really hold it nicely in place. So, now that I've finished that, what I want to do is I actually want to weave down through the beads,
and you're gonna take it slow. You know, they are tight in here, so you are gonna wanna take it slow. You're gonna weave down through the beads and go through to the back side. Now, depending on how thick your leather is, you may need to switch back to your Glover's Needle just to get back to the back side of the leather, but that's gonna be the next step. Okay, here I am with my needle or my thread coming out on the back side. I went through the leather and I'm on the back side now. Um, what I like to do is just take a little half hitch just to secure everything. So I'm gonna take my needle and just pass it underneath one of those bits of thread that you can see from when we did the embroidery. And we're gonna pull this down until we have like a little loop there. And then we'll just go through that loop and pull that tight. So that gives us just a little half hitch to hold everything tight. Now there's one last thing I wanna show you. Um, it's a really nice way to kind of finish off any bezel, um, whether you're using an eye or if you're using a stone, but when you're doing this kind of uh, technique with the embroidery into the peyote stitch, a nice little tip I can show you, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your Glover's Needle on for this part, is to come back up next to your bezel, so you want to come as close to your bezel as you can. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use 15 rounds, and I'm just going to do a row of embroidery, and we'll do six at a time, and I'm going to do it right up against the bezel there. So it just sort of outlines everything. It gives you like a really nice finish to this, a nice tidy finish. So again, I'm going to have my six beads at a time. I'm going to lay them up against the bezel, Make sure everything's snug in place. I'm gonna go back through the leather, pull everything down, come up between my third and my fourth like I did before, and go through those number four, five, and six to do our back stitch. And then I'm gonna keep going six at a time all the way around. Now with this, because we're not gonna be working off of it, we're not gonna be peyote stitching off of it, it doesn't need to be an even number. So when you get to the end and you have that little space left at the end, whatever you need to put in there is fine. It doesn't have to be even or odd or whatever, just whatever fits in there is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, that whole row of 15s has been finished there, that whole row of embroidery um, at the base of the bezel. Once that's done, I would recommend, just like we did when we did that first base row for the bezel, just passing through the beads another time or two. Um, if you find that the Glover's Needle is too thick to do this, because it is thicker than a 13, you could switch back to your size 13 needle um, and use that to pass through everything, but I think you'll find that it really tidies everything up nicely. So um, it gives a great finish to it. And then what I'm gonna do once I've done that is I'm just gonna go back through to the back side and do a couple of half hitches, just like we had done before when we, when we finished the bezel and we went to the back side. And that will really just kind of secure everything. And we wanna do that before we actually, before we actually cut the thread, so. Incidentally, this technique is great not just for prosthetic eyes, but you can use it on any flat-backed cabochon or object. Um, it's a great technique to do this base row of embroidery and then peyote stitch off of it. And then, like I said, to do this final round of the 15s around the bottom, it just finishes it off nicely. So I've gone all the way through them again. I'm gonna go back down through the leather. I'm gonna flip this guy over, and I'm just gonna catch the thread like we did before, pull it down so I have a tiny little loop there, pass through that loop, pull it tight, and I usually, when I'm, when I'm finishing off here, I'll do a second one. I do two of those right in the same spot to secure it. And then what you can do is just go in with your scissors, and you don't need much of a tail. I usually you leave about a quarter of an inch there. That's all you're gonna need. And then there you are, all done. So this technique is great. You can you know, make a pendant out of it, like if I just wanted to back this piece here, um, you know, cut away the edge and back it. You can use it on a bracelet. Uh, you can use it in a larger piece of embroidery. So there's a lot of different options. So I hope you enjoy doing that. Um, you know, it'll give you something something to think about. Eyes are difficult to come by. I do have to say that they are a little bit tricky to come by because they are antiques. So um, they can be difficult uh, 
best place to look probably is um, is online. I do occasionally have them on my website, but not always. It just depends when I'm able to, to get a hold of them. But antique human prosthetic is what you would want to look for. If you can't find these, another uh, great eye option are taxidermy eyes. So those are um, there's a lot of great taxidermy eyes out there, different animal eyes. So that's another option as well. Um, and there's a great company called Van Dykes that's a taxidermy supply, but they have a great selection of eyes. So I will put the link to them in the show notes as well to help you out with that. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today for this video on bezeling glass eyes. Be well, stay safe, and beat on.